That's right. From Texas to California, from D.C. to Florida. Nationwide, thousands of children are arrested each year at K through 8th grade schools. And the data reveals those students are disproportionately black or have disabilities. Students like this boy, who we'll call CB. According to court records, this was one of four times CB was handcuffed at a Southern California school. This time for refusing to get up and walk to the principal's office so he could be questioned about accusations that he threw rocks at school resource officers the previous day. He is being punished for the very diagnosis that he has. Dan Stromer is a civil rights attorney representing CB along with the Disability Rights Education Defense Fund. He explains the 11 year old has diagnosed oppositional defiance disorder, which requires a specialized response to non-compliant behavior. Either you go cooperating or I'm going to take you to the office. Do you understand? No, do you understand that you are going to the office? Less than 90 seconds after officers arrive, they pull him from his desk, pin the child down, and handcuff the boy, who continues to struggle. What do you think they should have done in that situation? When he wouldn't go to the principal's office, what should they have done? Classically, you begin with a de-escalation, and, and if you can't reason, then you bring the parents in. I don't want it on the radio. The school knows that he suffers from a diagnosable condition, which is exacerbated by their approach. We asked the district if they have a specialized policy or trained staff to respond to students with disabilities like CB. Who's good with him to, to calm him down? Like, is there any staff? No? No. Representatives from the school district say they're unable to comment on the litigation or medical issues, but that, quote, overall, we work with the sheriff's department to use de-escalation tactics with all students regardless of known or unknown conditions. And while CB's case may be extreme, he's certainly not alone. A CBS News analysis of U.S. Department of Education data reveals more than 11,000 children were arrested on elementary and middle school campuses nationwide in just one year. And law enforcement was called more than 79,000 times. Now, only about one out of every seven of those so-called referrals ended with an arrest. But data reveals K-8 through students with disabilities were more than three times as likely to be arrested than their non-disabled counterparts. Here in California, police were called more than 10,000 times in a single year. That's about in line with the national average. But California has a much lower student arrest rate. Only about one out of every 18 referrals on elementary and middle school campuses end in an arrest. Does that tell you that police are being called for incidents that maybe don't warrant a police officer? I, I wouldn't necessarily draw that conclusion. Former Sac County Sheriff John McGinnis says whether it's local law enforcement or a sworn school resource officer, they're trained to de-escalate and may try to avoid arresting a child when possible. Law enforcement officers have the, uh, the latitude to uh, book somebody, to cite them and release them, or to counsel and release. McGinnis, a former school resource officer himself, often serves as an expert witness in cases of police misconduct. He believes in some cases, law enforcement is being misused on school campuses. There is a time to call in law enforcement, but school rules should be enforced by school authorities. State law requires districts refer students to law enforcement for any offense that may violate criminal code. But our review of local on-campus law enforcement referrals reveals a combination of crimes and behavioral issues. For instance, May Hensley Junior High in series reported at least three arrests and 26 referrals for reasons ranging from possession of marijuana or a knife to circulating inappropriate photos, disrupting school activities, and, quote, tardy mediation. Meanwhile, the Modesto City Elementary District reported two schools with a combined 31 police referrals and two arrests, one for threatening mass violence against the school, the other for pulling a fire alarm. In all, we found at least 15 arrests and 104 referrals on just 10 local campuses in one year. These are elementary schools. That's a lot of requesting of police services in a place where you think it should be the rare exception. Now, it's important to note this national data is imperfect. Experts do believe there are far more arrests than are actually being reported.